What's going on, everybody? So we are finally ranking all the teams in the game. Now, when I say all the teams, I mean their leaders and the most popular characters associated with them. There's, of course, so many different teams in the game, all sorts of different combinations like duos and trios like Gimli and Legolas that you can fit into a team and then boom, there's a new team. We're considering the actual tags inside the game and the most popular characters associated with them. So we have 10 teams here. We only have like 58, 59 characters in the game, I believe. So this is most of the characters or most of the teams that you'll see. And of course, some of these overlap a little bit. Some of these don't overlap. And uh, there's so many different ways you can go with this. But for today, we're talking about maximum potential. What can I get out of this team if I truly were to invest a lot into them? There will be future lists talking about like the best investments in terms of like free to play investment, maybe more invested at max potential like this list. But as for what we can actually get out of them, maximal potential, that is what we're covering today. So with that said, let's dive into this. We have an S, A, B, C, D tier list. And of course, we have to talk about the S tier. There is only, in my opinion, one team that fits the S tier. You're going to be using them everywhere. They're going to be like best in slot. They're going to be excellent every single time you use them. And that's the elves. Now, when we consider the elves, there are typically four members always ran that I've seen. That's really, really effective. Elodin, here as that duo with Synergy, Lord Elrond, of course, and then Arwen. All four of those make up the core elf team. After that, you have a fifth slot. This is more of a flex slot. I've seen Legolas in this slot. I've seen Halbred in this slot. I've seen Naramiri in this slot. I've seen uh, Lilia Lamia on both the other elves. I've seen all sorts of different characters, even someone like Gaz in that fifth slot. This is the elf team though. And generally speaking, the main reason why this team is so powerful is Lord Alron himself, as well as matching together a bunch of the strongest characters in the game. You have the strongest leader ability with the strongest healing potential in the game. And then you fit the best tank in the game with him. You also fit one of the better supports of the game with Arwood in there. You also fit one of the better single turret DPS, Elrahir, in there. And guess what? You're just going to get the best team in the game. <laughs> they are really, really performing well in Arena. It is the team to take down. They also perform exceptionally well in the um, Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 of the raids. This team is just excellent. And I've seen chapter three a little bit, although it is a new, you know, raid team or raid uh, chapter in the game. They are performing very, very well with the amount of healing that you can pump out and the just synergy with the uh, amount of regeneration popping off. Just such a strong, strong team. Excellent, excellent S tier and the only one in the game. Then we move on to the Haradrim. Now, the Haradrim, they, I think deserve a B tier slot. They're definitely solid and someone I would definitely invest into. But to be honest, they're not someone I would necessarily use to push campaign squads. I would not necessarily use them in arena. They're really a raid specialized team. And to be fair, we don't have that much content in the game right now. So most of these teams are going to be used for raids. But in specific, Haradrim aren't that impressive in chapter one and aren't that impressive in chapter three. They are solid and very very good in chapter two but that's really what you're using them for and so for that reason they end up in the b tier of course with this team you're going to use the Haradrim five unlike the elves they don't have like a flex slot and the main reason for that is to sharing those passives and this team will not function without the leader it just will not it's not that good of a team and uh it's uh it's going to be definitely worthwhile to invest in for those raids push if you're looking to round out your chapter two raid comps. But other than that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. But of course, raids are very important. So B tier. Next up is the Gondor squad. Now, this one's a little bit more speculative because we obviously haven't seen Denethor in the game yet. But I'm actually going to drop Denethor in the A tier. And the reason I'm going to drop him in the A tier is because I believe this squad, once you truly level them up, are going to be the most annoying team to deal with even more so than the elves in arena, as well as just being a strong raid comp. Uh, Denethor himself is just absolutely absurdly powerful for that leader ability. Giving your team full on like 50% block chance is ridiculous. And the ability to AOE and you know, get some CC out and, and really provide a lot of value for your team. 
This team I could see being exceptionally annoying for Arena, very, very powerful for Chapter 3, and actually quite solid in Chapter 1 because of the constant assist attacks with Faramir. Now, as I mentioned earlier with the Elves, to me, this team has a core 4 and then a 5th flex slot. Uh, the core 4 are going to be the Faramir, Boromir, Denethor, plus Herendil. Sergeant Aura is going to be the question slot. Is the block chance increasing from Denethor worth it, or are you going to run a healer in that slot? like Lord Elrond, although you don't really want to pull from the Elf team, or Pippin, or something like that, where you actually have some healing to the squad. We'll have to see. My guess is that is the case, but I think the Gondor squad is going to be absolutely, extremely annoying because of how tanky they are. Road to Rivendell. Road to Rivendell. To me, this team ends up in between B and C. Uh, I'm going to drop it into B. I think most of the teams in this game are actually relatively evenly balanced in a lot of situations. Uh, when you get to like the lower tier teams, the higher tier teams just absolutely outshine everything. But the uh, Road to Rivendell squad with Strider is a little bit awkward because oftentimes I want Strider in my Rangers or I want Strider in my Rohan humans, right? And so it kind of pulls one of the more important characters out of those teams to put in with the Hobbits. But the Hobbits are quite good, especially if you're able to level them up. And in fact, I could even see them being potentially better than the Haradrim. But it really depends on, of course, where you're using them. I think the Road to Rivendell in specific is a little bit better for Arena. I also think they're better for the campaign. And more importantly, they are must-haves. And now that I'm saying it, I'm going to put them above uh, the Haradrim. They are must-haves for their campaign squad, which makes them inherently a little bit more valuable than the Haradrim because you have to use them for their uh, specific campaign. So... They're still a very solid team. They work really well for Chapter 2. They work really well for Chapter 1 because of the assist attacks as well as the AoE from Strider. Honestly, pretty solid team and someone I'm happy, happy to invest in. And of course, if you're free to play, they're one of the better teams to invest in as well. Isengard. Isengard to me has actually shot up to A tier. Now, again, we're considering the very, very developed Isengard teams. If you do not have a very, very developed Isengard team, you're going to be like, why is this team so high on the list compared to a lot of other teams? That's because you really, really need to see them leveled up high in order to get the value. Because once you do, you really start to see the value of Uglux's constant leadership healing. That's really, really powerful on this team. Again, the extra armor, the extra HP you're getting from the higher star level, higher gear level, this really translates to a lot of survivability for the team. But you also have a ton of assist attacks with Maher, Ugluck, and then you also have very, very massive amounts of debuffs with like Dunhar, and of course, Ugluck and Maher themselves. And uh, with Dunhar specifically, you actually have a lot of bleeds with the basic, and it is a really, really long duration bleed, which ends up being really, really good. Now, I mentioned Ugluck, Maher, and Dunhar, which are three of the core members of the Isengard team. Now, when I'm considering who else is part of this team, well, this one's a little bit interesting because I actually usually fit Gauze into the team, as many other people do. And I do think Gauze fits a little bit better in the Isengard team than necessarily the Mordor squad, uh, which we will be talking about a little bit later. But as for the fifth member, well, this one's a little bit more interesting because, well, you have uh, the Morja and you also have Azag. Depends on which situation you want or what content you're battling, but because the Isengard does have five members plus Gauze as kind of like that slot that you want to fit in, I generally prefer Morja in uh, Chapter 2 and Ajak in Chapter 1. That's just kind of how I found it. And they are very, very good. They do a lot of damage. As I said, they have a lot of survivability, which is really, really nice. And if you're running in Chapter 1 with Gauze, they absolutely destroy. They are much, much easier to reach a lot of points with just gauze himself and then the ability to survive and then if you are using them in the later chapters well they have a lot of debuffs that are very important to slow down the trolls etc for chapter three i think they're going to do decently well but they don't really have a solid like tank provoker uh that's really really good but they do have a lot of survivability in terms of the debuffs that they're putting out and the healing which can be nice so good for chapter one chapter two and in my opinion the team to push shadow campaign on so that's really nice as well then we have the Rangers. Rangers are going to be next up. And, uh, well, I think the Ranger squad is quite good, but they're a little bit awkward. Uh, and I'll explain that in just a bit. I'm going to put them at a high B level. Now, as I mentioned with the other teams, they have sort of flex slots and such things like that. The Ranger squad 
is awkward because it's pulling from like every other team in the game. You have Faramir that's going to pull from Gondor. You have Halbrad that's kind of the only plug and play character, but you have Elodin, who's a ranger, gonna pull from the elf squad. Elra here is gonna pull from the elf squad. Strider's gonna pull from the Road to Rivendell and the Rohan squad. So the ranger squad, although it is very, very good, the reason why it ends up in B tier is because the squad itself does not compare to the pieces that could fit into other squads. And so while you can run Strider, Elra here, Halbred, Elodin, and Faramir in the same team, you're gonna get more use out of those characters if you spread them out amongst their other teams. And so this is the one awkward squad on the list because of that. All the other squads in the game basically have their own individual characters with maybe one or two at the most characters that you're going to pull from other squads. Whereas Rangers is literally entirely made up of other teams members, <laughs> except for Halbrad. And even Halbrad, you kind of want to use in other members, uh, other squads as well. But do not underestimate Halbred when he is leveled up to the max. This guy is absolutely absurdly good. He just offers so much. And the overall value of the Ranger squad, the amount of damage they can pump out is exceptionally good. Um, you have like Elra here, Strider, and Faramir, and they just do insane amounts of DPS. Probably one of the higher DPS squads in the entire game because of how much DPS is localized between those three. But Overall, they're going to end up in B tier because they do form a good squad, but it pulls from a lot of other teams. Next up, we have the Mordor squad. And uh, to me, the Mordor squad ends up in C tier. Now, if you manage to pull together this squad uh, at its max potential, it can be quite good. And uh, in some scenarios, you might end up in B tier. But I found specifically for like the raids and a lot of PvE content, well, it's not quite as good as I was hoping for. However, if you're looking for like a chapter one raid squad, if you're using Gauze in the squad, because he is a Mordor member, you actually will get a lot of effectiveness out of this. And they're actually quite solid in arena. I'm kind of arguing in my mind whether or not I should be putting him into B tier. And maybe I should even be dropping down the Haradrim over the Mordor squad um, to kind of even out the tiers here. But uh, yeah, the Mordor squad, once you do invest in them, Shagrath's leader just gives you so much turn meter, which is really, really nice. You have Gauz for the AoE damage. You have Rachma, Grimlers, and Ujan to just provide a lot of additional buffs, debuffs, and damage. They're actually quite a good squad. And now that I'm talking about it, I think I'm going to have to put Haradrim in C tier and the Mordor squad in B tier. Because once again, Haradrim, although they're very good in Chapter 2, they're not as impressive in Chapter 1, not as impressive in Chapter 3. And uh, to me, Mordor, the Mordor squad actually does decently well in Chapter 2 because you actually have... Uh, decent max HP damage debuffs, and you have a lot of Terminator generating, which is really, really nice against the um, troll. And then for chapter one, you just have a lot of AoE gauze in specific. So yeah, I'm gonna have to put them in B tier. Again, this is max potential. So consider what you will there. Goblins up next. I've been very, very big fan of goblins, but I'm gonna have to put them in C tier. <laughs> I mean, the one thing that goblins have going for them is their debuffs. This is a really, really strong value engine uh, with a lot of their debuffs that come from the squad. In specific, you have Golvers, who provides a lot of bleeds. I believe I'm getting that right. I always mix up some of the goblin names, but uh, Golvers, I believe, has a lot of the bleeds that are pumping out. And bleeds is such a strong debuff, along with poisons and things like that. They're actually quite a good squad and uh, really specifically good for like chapter one and chapter two of the raids. I think they're actually quite good in both. But chapter one is a little bit lacking uh, comparatively to some of the other B tier squads. And even though they're good in chapter two, I think Haradrim outlasts them. And so they end up in C tier for me, just an average squad, nothing too exciting, but definitely something that uh, down the line you might want to consider investing into. Rohan, I think the Rohan squad actually ends up in, ooh, this is, this is hard to say. I, I want to put them in A tier, but I'm looking at it and it's like, maybe they're like more of a B tier. The thing is with them, is you have the humans, right? And you have a lot of humans. You have the Rohan humans that you're really going to be running. But I'm looking at the squad. When do what, Who do I want to pull into the Rohan squad? Well, you have Lady Eowyn, you have Aethane, you have Aomer. Those are the three that you're guaranteed to run. After that, maybe you run Halbred plus Miri. Maybe you run like Strider plus a fifth. It's kind of awkward to fill in those last two slots. And for those reasons, I'm going to put them at the top of B tier as well. I think they're a very, very good squad. I think that they're 
probably the best to push light campaign especially in the early game but also there's very easy to invest into but again we're considering maximum potential here and if that's the case well they just don't get as much value out of their squad as like the isengard or as speculation gondor or the elves and uh well while they can do a lot of damage with Amr and eowyn giving might to the whole team afn as a tank isn't as good as Eladin, although he is probably one of the better tanks in the game the question is where are those two other slots coming in from and let's say you run the strider and you run halberd well now you're pulling from road to rivendell which isn't that bad because well you now have let's say a better human squad but now you have one less team right that's can get a little bit tricky sometimes and of course you do need a healer in that squad which is maybe something like halberd or pippin but again you're pulling from other squads by doing that so while they can be very very good if you put the right team comp together again you are lowering the overall power of your account by putting the best rohan squad together and for that reason they end up in b tier because of that so off to bifur and the dwarves i've been pretty impressed with the dwarves but i do think they're missing something i think they it pains me to put them in in c or t i don't think they're worse than goblins mm -mm. <laughs> i think that uh they are better than goblins but worse than the haradrim in a lot of situations <sighs> so with the dwarves you're using like buy for feely keely gimli and then you can use fro uh, which i found to be quite solid but oftentimes i've seen people use legolas with gimli because they have the duo synergy so you run like four dwarves plus legolas um which can be quite good to be honest, the dwarves have been kind of unimpressive, I guess you could say. They are solid, but not super exciting. I was hoping for a little bit more from them. I was hoping for them to be a quite tanky team with quite a bit of healing, because you do have, I forget which one, the Feely or Keely. I always mix up the two names, but the, the healer with them. And uh, you have a lot of tanky stats with Gimli, which is quite nice. And if you are running Fro as well. So overall, not bad. You think with Bifur, though, himself, is that while he does have a leader ability and he is um doing some things for your team he's kind of just like an awkward member like yeah he gives you like defensive yeah he gives like provokes and a few things like that but honestly he's just kind of like a mediocre character like he doesn't provide a ton of things um for your squad he's just like he really is there as a leader that's what he's there for unlike like aowen who's there as a leader but also provides aoe might and a disable or uh yeah and then you have Halbrad, who provides the leader ability, but also you have the AoE heal and you have the tankiness. You have Strider, who, yes, he's providing leader ability for the Road to Rivendell, but you have the AoE DPS. And the same goes for basically every other character. Bifur and Tebeb and the Great Goblin to some extent are there as leaders, but they don't do a whole lot on their own, which ends up being a little bit awkward. Um, not in terms of like plug and play, but in terms of part of the team. So that's going to be the tier list here i don't actually think any team is d tier i don't think that uh, any team like really just is garbage and that's good because we very much have very little characters in the game and i'm going to pull up the game here just so i can actually see how many characters we have ah that's right we have 58 characters in the game so it's very very nice to see that no team in my opinion is d tier because of that because if you did you'd basically be taking out like 10 percent of the entire team's slash characters in the game which would be pretty atrocious now as i mentioned there are a lot of different formulations that you can make and uh, at the end of the day it's pretty difficult to be able to upgrade all of these members like it's going to be a long time before you do but let's say you do upgrade them all you're going to be pulling from a couple of other teams so at the end of the day the ultimate goal is to kind of figure out the team's best synergies while pulling together teams that don't necessarily take away from other teams right so you're gonna look for the best team and then the second best team and then the third best team and you don't necessarily want to pull from those squads but let's say you're running raids and you want multiple good squads maybe you are pulling from those squads and that's where maybe rohan comes up and you maybe you pull from i don't know uh halbrad from another team or strider from the road to rivendell squad or whatever it is it's tricky it does get tricky in the end game when you do have a lot of teams built out but i think overall this is kind of where the teams end up in my mind of course if you all disagree let me know in the comment section down below most of us including myself aren't going to get to this point for quite some time but it's nice to dream it's nice to talk about and it's cool to see the teams 
on the list. Hopefully in the future, I'll be able to get every single character on here and uh, rate them with the portraits because I do think this template is quite nice, but it takes some time to get all the characters cut out. Um, so, uh, you know, when I do get some time in the future, maybe I'll be able to get every single character cut out, but it took me about, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get all these characters cut out. And that means uh, it'll take like four hours to get all of them. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like on the video, sub to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one.